And it looks like I'm back. I'm sorry. Um, looks like my internet connection just cut out. Normally this happens when I'm in the middle of a raid in World of Warcraft, so um, of course um, if it doesn't happen at that time it has to happen during my stream. Um, that's just Murphy's Law. Okay, let's start over. Um, last Tuesday I tried to um, set up GitLab as a container on our container um, container uh, Docker orchestration platform and it didn't work. So I started to doubt that my stack setup was somehow wrong, but it turned out as a GitHub user Intel found out before me um, that my that I was simply running out of resources. So um, when I uh, first I checked in the container Slack community that my GitLab setup um, was okay, and there were several people that um, were using um, a, an almost identical stack definition as I did, and that's when uh, I actually started to take a closer look to my um, container setup, and it turned out uh, when I set it up initially, I uh, used the uh, smallest digital ocean droplets I could get because um, it was only a test and um, you don't need to spend a lot of money on this. And uh, then I simply forgot, forgot about this. And um, so as soon as I upped the RAM of my droplets, um, GitLab spun up immediately, set everything up, uh, database and all the stuff, and I was able to log in, um, create an account, and uh, so my proof of concept setup uh, uh, was actually done. So um, I still have to follow up on um, making our stack definitions public so I can share them with you, um, which I uh, definitely intend to do. Uh, I don't see why not, but I'll have to um, take a closer look before I actually commit to do this. Uh, so thanks to Intel um, for uh, investigating this for me and um, yeah, um, brilliant. Today I'm going to do something uh, different. Uh, while I intend to do a lot more container uh, experimentation and uh, setting things up, um, I am going to do some Rails development today. Um, we run a Ruby on Rails application uh, namely our hosting dashboard, um, which I developed uh, a while ago. Um, and um, many things uh, in there uh, can be improved. Um, the One of the main things that can and need to be improved is the uh, whole uh, permissions uh, aspect of things. Um, but before I go into the details, um, let me just uh, put out my, my uh, usual disclaimer. If there is anything you'd like to know, if there is anything you'd like to chat about, um, just post it to the chat. I'll uh, be happy to, to respond to you and answer all your questions and requests. Alrighty. Now. Hosting dashboard. Okay, uh, how do I explain this? The, the way our hosting dashboard um, is structured internally, so um, in uh, uh, tech terminology, the, the way our models are associated with each other is based on the fact that we had our system management based on Chef much, much earlier than we had our hosting dashboard. 
that's an interesting story in and by itse itself, but uh, I won't get into that now. Um, so, the way our hosting dashboard models things um, is based on how things are modeled in our system management. And uh, since we are talking about Chef, things are modeled in data bag items uh, in Chef, which are basically JSON files that uh, contain a JSON document um, uh, which contains, in this case, all the information of a single website. This includes the domains of the website, it includes who owns the website, it includes the SSH keys who can access the website uh, and maintain the code. Um, and uh, it uh, contains which databases are used by the website and many, many more things. Um, and uh, that's not ideal in terms of um, data modeling um, because um, when you come from a permission point of view, um, it becomes very hard to uh, make a flexible permission system um, because the main relationship is website has a single owner which normally is a company and um, in turn I modeled the user relationship in a way that users are just associated with a company so we have Websites belong to a company, and a company has users. It's not wrong, however, it makes things complicated uh, when you take a closer look at our um, specific use case. Our hosting um, is mostly geared towards web agencies. And uh, um, Web agencies work for many of their customers and um, these customers are oftentimes the owners of the website in, in a, from a billing standpoint. So we have the website owner as the company that uh, owns the website. However, the users that maintain the website aren't uh, in many cases, the users of that company, but the users employed by the web agency that maintains the website. So um, the current model doesn't really uh, allow this uh, more complex association between the original website owner and the company that maintains the website and uh, is direct user of our uh, hosting. Um, these web agencies are basically the dev part to our ops part. And the website owner just comes in for billing purposes in many cases. So um, the way that uh, our current model is structured um, just doesn't take this into account. and. Um, only two years ago, I created a few issues that uh, reflect this uh, problem. Um, so I guess it's time to do something about it. Uh, let me log into my development server and um, show you what I mean. But uh, first, let's create a branch that uh, reflects what I'm going to do. So I, um, I'm going to <coughs> sorry, work on issue number 21 that uh, allows for a direct association between websites and users without having some kind of company in between. That's another thing. Um, many times a web agency runs lots of websites on our platform but uh, there's simply no way that uh, I can assign developer A to 
two different websites that are owned by different companies because uh, as I already mentioned, the company is always in between in this relationship. I hope I'm, I'm making at least a little bit of sense. If not, uh, let me know. Mm, here we go. Uh, 21. Um, website users. So. Um, we can simply start with the website model of my Rails application. And oh, it's even more indirect. So as you can see here, a website belongs to a cluster, which then in turn belongs to a company and thus giving all the users of that company uh, access to the website. And instead of the website, uh, instead of the users injecting their SSH keys into all the websites they maintain, the website has a direct association with the SSH keys model, which also makes things more complicated than necessary because for example imagine a user has to replace their ssh key they lost it somehow or for some reason need to uh, um, use a new ssh key instead of simply being able to replace the ssh key in their user account they now have to replace this ssh key in each and every website that uh, has this SSH key assigned via this relationship. So yeah, that's not really good. Um, what I'd like to do is that uh, I can assign users directly to a website. And I guess the first thing I can do here is do as many Oh, it's has many actually, has many users. And um, yeah, in that case, I don't need dependent destroy. If I want to delete a website, I don't want to delete the user who is um, assigned to it. So it's just has many users. And let me close this shell window over here so I can open the tests for this model on the other side. So the test needs to be extended to it should have many users. So if I run these tests, well, I get, no, I won't get any migration errors because I didn't change the actual database schema. Both models and therefore their tables in the database already exist. We, I'm just connecting them differently. However, tests still fail. Oh, of course, yeah. I did forget that um, this whole thing um, is now Docker-based. So, um, I need to run docker compose up minus d. And then I can run my tests inside the containers via docker compose exec. In the app container, run my specs. My RPE is not going to work because the alias doesn't exist there, but bundle exec will.
Yeah, I guess it's time I get to do this kind of development more regularly again. Still, there are a few things I need to migrate. That's interesting. Docker Compose. Um, uh, break db migrate. Let's let's test. Really need to get rid of these deprecation warnings. Okay, tests are running well. Okay, uh, hello Simon, how you doing? No, uh, but this time uh, the, the my children actually were um, at actual lunch, um, so they didn't have any opportunity to not on the Wi-Fi cables. So it's. It's probably due to some other reason. Solar flares, probably. Okay. Now my tests tell me that um, there is actually no foreign key in the user model. So the association um, can't actually be um, applied. That's correct. So I have to add a migration after all which I'm going to do with a uh, um, bundle exec rails generate migration add websites to user or add website to user I guess and um, no it, I need to add user to website user to website, user ID, integer. No, it's not that easy. Um, it is a many-to-many, a many-to-many -many relationship. So I actually need a new model here. Generate model, website. User. Hey Nar003, how you doing? Happy to have you on the stream. Here we go. Let's take a look at that. Website user. Okay. Uh, yeah, I should have added a few columns here. Uh, we can still do this. Um, basic things. So let's open the Rails guides. Active record basics. Time to relearn everything, Mr. Mm, 
creating active record models. So I need to create a table, I do, and I'll simply use t and then integer and uh, relationships. So now um, I set up a VAMP server, but when I try to open it, a pop-up message shows MVSC DLL 1110 program fail of execution. Oh, the DLL in there tells me that you are trying, well, well the W should as well, tells me uh, that you're running this on a Windows machine, and I'm afraid I haven't touched Windows in more than 10 years, so um, I actually don't know how to help you there. Sorry. So it's actually t dot integer website ID which should not be null and we'll have an integer user ID which also should not be null. Okay. So yeah, ac actually, uh, the latest Windows version I ever had contact with and uh, was, uh, I think, Windows Vista, which I had to run to use my bookkeeping software at that time. At that time. How many hours a day I do code? Um, I'd say at the moment it's about a, a day a week total in a good week. Uh, the reason is um, I'm not uh, in wor working full time in, in operations and, and DevOps. Um, I uh, I'm the managing director of my company, so I have a lot of stuff going on um, that's not technical, and uh, so I don't get to code that much. In fact, this stream um, was an opportunity to get uh, back into the the, uh, the deeper stuff uh, again, and uh, I'm, if I'm honest, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> But uh, yeah, uh, my job doesn't leave me too much time to get uh, get into coding, and that's exactly the reason why I, I keep stumbling here and have to look up things which I already knew and um, uh, just can't remember. So uh, that's that. Mm. Since we are using the primary keys of both the website model and the user model, um, I think I'm good. I don't need to add any columns to the existing models. Yeah, but um, let me follow up on your question. Um, so um, back when I didn't have to manage and, and uh, deal with business stuff, I spent most of that my time coding, uh, actually, so uh, easily 30 hours a week, if not more. And back at uh, eight years ago, when I started this company, I had to um, do all the coding myself. Um, both on the infrastructure end of things, where I did all the system automation, and later when I built exactly this uh, Rails dashboard. 
Any advice for beginners how many a day to code? Well, uh, my, my generic advice would be code as long as you feel productive. Don't overextend. It doesn't make much sense to, to try and uh, be creative, and coding is a very creative process, um, longer than uh, you can. There will be a point uh, where you simply can't be uh, very creative anymore because you're getting tired, because uh, you're getting distracted and, and all these things, so um, put as much time in it as you can, because that's how you grow, but uh, be mindful with your, your creative juices and uh, uh, don't, don't uh, force uh, yourself to do stuff that your brain simply won't be able to manage. To be honest, that was exactly the reason why I uh, um, called off my last live stream back uh, Thursday last week, because um, I, even though I had taken the week off work, I, I thought I would be able to to do uh, a live stream. And when the time came nearer, I realized, no, I'm completely uh, spent, and uh, I really can't think of a topic that would interest me, and I really can't. Um, be sure that I won't will would be able to to generate any results, and uh, that's why in the end I decided nope, uh, I'll I'll simply call it off. Uh, it would have been a terrible, terrible experience for you and uh, for me too. And I try to not make this a terrible experience as well. So let's get on with it. Um. Let me see, I should be able to run this migration. And run it on the development database as well. Just for our explanation, uh, Rails uses two databases here. I have a development database that uh, I'm, I'm using to, to run the application on my development environment. And there's a, another database for testing, which gets emptied every time I'm running my tests. So um, that's uh, it'll always start from a clean slate. Hello, Mudstart, how are you? Welcome to my live coding stream, I appreciate it. As a beginner, five to six hours is good enough? Yeah. I can't imagine that even I, uh, who has been coding for more than 30 years now, um, would be able to generate uh, much beyond six hours. If you are actually getting six solid hours of coding down, uh, that's, that's great. That's really good. Okay, so here's my migration, and um, now I have to change my model because it's not that I have many users, it is that I have many website users. And my website users um, oh how do you refresh in nerd nerd tree uh, I've just switched to nerd tree as my directory view <laughs> I did generate a new model, did I? Didn't I? Yeah. Oh no, I didn't. Did I? Yeah, I generated. Okay, so website users. Here is this one. A 
it's buffer six I'm interested in. Huh. I was guessing. Thanks for following NAR. Oh, I appreciate it. Okay, so um what I can tell Brains here is that a website user has has a website and has a user. Why is everything we only here? Oh, ah, yeah, it's because uh, it was generated in Docker, but now is um, written to my local file system. Um, let me look up how this actually works. Um, It's not it has a, so not, it's a, belongs to. Okay. Yes, of course. Belongs to. Can you learn Angular 6 without knowing basics of Angular 4? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can. Um, I'm not a front end developer, so I'm talking a bit up, out of my ass here. Um, but uh, I don't see why learning a newer version of a language, or in this case of a JavaScript framework, uh, should require you to uh, learn the previous versions. The only thing um, which could become confusing is um, picking the right tutorials and um, example projects uh, on the web, because um, uh, that they might be uh, geared towards Angular 4 in this case and uh, might not work with Angular 6 in the same way. So just be careful where, where um, you get your material from. But um, I guess if you're starting out anyway, it makes sense to start with Angular, with the newer version of Angular. Okie dokie, let's see if my tests will, not, will work now. Let me think if I'm on the right track here. So I need a many to many relationship uh, that's why I introduced a new model that works as an intermediary between website and users there are a website can have many users and obviously a user can maintain many websites uh, and uh, so far I have told rails that a website has many website users And uh, I might not have saved my file here because I don't think that's supposed to happen. Uh, let me see. Has many website users. Let's save this once more. Oh, uh, no, I, I, I uh, just have to update the test. My naming might be off because I just thought about uh, the, the reverse association. Um, I need to tell the user's model that it has many 
website users. That's not how you would explain it to someone, is it? I know uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, and PHP, and MySQL, and Bootstrap is enough. Okay, yeah. can I learn Angular? Is Angular the best choice to learn? I can't answer your last question because I, as I said, I'm not a front-end developer, so um, uh, I would I don't know what a front-end developer would uh, recommend here. But if you are familiar with all these basic technologies, HTML, CSS, even jQuery, JavaScript, and the database sites, so or a bit of the back-end stuff uh, too, I think you're, you're perfectly set up to, to learn some kind of framework. I guess it depends on um, what you actually try to do because you could uh, learn the f a framework on the uh, server side which would be something like Laravel for example for PHP or Symfony um, or of course you could learn a uh, client side uh, framework like Angular or React um, which also enables you to do server-side coding with Node.js. Um, so it really just depends on uh, what you are trying to accomplish here. Since Angular is pretty popular and uh, uh, seems to uh, evolve since there is a new version, um, I don't think why it wouldn't be a good choice. But um, you'd have to ask someone who has been using it for their opinion. Okay, so, uh, well, that's that. That way, at least my tests should be able to run successfully. Any suggestions how I should name this intermediate model? Website users does make sense, doesn't it? But a user that has many website users? Maybe I should choose something like website ownership or something like that, or a website. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I'm still missing tests for the website user relationship. That's correct, but otherwise everything is good. Mm. Maybe I should use, how about website collaboration? A website has many website collaborations, users, and a user has many website collaborations. Websites they collaborate on. Huh, why not? Naming things, that's always the hardest thing to do. Okay, so... Let me do a rollback of my recent migration.
on both databases. Okay. And then let's go and rename Just to be sure, let's quit this editor and start fresh so I don't save uh, things under their old names. So now we have a website collaboration. We have a website that should have many website collaborations. And we actually have a website collaboration and we should check for that so if I run my migrations again Oh crap. I need to rename this here too. Okay. Now we're good to go. Create website collaborations, initialized constant. Wait, what? What did I do wrong here? I could just go ahead and generate a new migration for this. Just to be sure that things work. So Let's get rid of that completely. Uh, let's create a new model. Oh no, in this case, just a migration. Create website collaboration. Right, let's just give it website ID integer. Okay. 
No, I have two. And I need the newer one. Close, create website collaboration, create table. That actually is the, is the old one, isn't it? Oh, good job, yeah. Now I'm getting confused. So this is uh, 815, 1455, and this is 1521. So let's remove this one. Website ID. Not null. Hey, must start. Thanks for following. I appreciate it very much. It really benefits the channel. Okay. You like my work? Thanks, thanks. I'm happy to hear that. I'll be doing this kind of work uh, over the next few sessions, I guess. Um, and um, so uh, things should become smoother as I'm finding my way back into things. Is it a multi-tenant app? No, it's not. It's actually um, a... Uh, well, it depends on what you mean with multi-tenant. Um, it's the hosting dashboard for all our customers. So um, obviously uh, there are many customers that log in, but it's a single view for, for um, each uh, customer. So um, in, in that case, uh, I don't think it, I would, wouldn't call it a multi-tenant application because uh, it doesn't, um, allow customers to have a dashboard for their own customers and with their own corporate design and things like that that multi-tenant applications normally have it's not built as a software as a service uh, thing where each customer has their own subdomain and things like that this could become interesting uh, in the future uh, of obviously being able to help our customers um, integrate their own customers would help our business but uh, it would drive complexity up a lot so that's why I'm shying away from this for the time being okay let's see if I can break oh, If I can run tests successfully again. So lesson from today, uh, think about naming earlier. Oops. Website user in website collaboration spec. Huh? How can that be? Interesting, okay. Didn't even know there is a website collaboration spec, but there is. What's the error? Website user. of the previous version. Oh, it's getting really stuffy in here because today it's been first it's been sunny. Now it's raining outside, so I just opened the window to get a bit of air. 
can only help my thought processes. So, um, still there is some kind of problem. Website collaboration spec in line 12. actually in this file. Okay. Of course. That's more like it. Sometimes it's really easier to tear things down and generate them from scratch instead of trying to catch each and every uh, location where you need to make a few changes because that becomes tedious quite quickly okay now at least we get a running test suite Without all these deprecation warnings, things would look really good. Okay, um, that's that, which should enable me to go into the user uh, model and say, uh, as many website collaborations and for the tests So that way it's now modeled from both sides. Websites have collaborations, user have collaborations and they meet in the middle. Simon, are you still with us? I need a beefier development server. Okay. Uh, that's that. Now. Now, um, what would be next? I can now assign users to websites and websites to users. At the moment, this relationship isn't used, of course. I just added it. Um, I now, in, in order to populate these new relationships I would need to take each website look uh, at its cluster because um, normally a customer uses um, one or more of our clusters 
and assigns or creates websites for these clusters. So I'll take the website, I'll get to its cluster, I'll check for the customer behind the cluster, and then I get this customer's users. And with that information, I could now populate the website collaborations table. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's a thing we definitely need to do when we start using this relationship uh, for at, at the start of our switch we need to populate this um, thing here so I think I'm going to create an admin script that actually does this so there is directory of admin scripts that can do a few things just let me look up uh, how this works syntactically we yeah, simply use normal stuff okay so um, admin scripts populate website collaborations.rb I go ahead and uh, copy this first line oh, where's my populate script yeah. And so, I do something like websites, find each, in order to batch through all the websites. And then I go ahead and uh, say, okay, now I have a cluster, which is and I get to the customer. And then I Say website collaboration. Create website is a website and user is customer user. Of course, this will work only once. Once I've created these, um, I shouldn't run it again because uh, I'll get duplicate um, entries. But uh, this script is intended to run only once. Let's see if it works.
sausage file directory. And it's called. I just need to make it executable, I guess. Why not? Huh. Okay, what's wrong here? Bad interpreter in N no such file directory. Oh, I don't have env available here in the docker container. Oh, okay. Should be able to run it with uh, Ruby. Well, nope. Unitualized constant websites. Do I need to run this with Rails exec? How do I execute a script in the... in the Rails... context? Oh, it's Rails Runner, and then... Just Rails Run, okay. Yeah. So I guess it's Rails Runner. This is a long time. Welcome to the Jochen Relearns Rails stream. Okay, websites actually doesn't exist. It's a website. All the models are, all the class names are singular. Writex is away from customer databases, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm just uh, working on the permission stuff. Maybe we should remove uh, access for our customers uh, in the first place. So, undefined method customer for cluster. Let's look at cluster again. belongs to company it's not customer it's company you know, one of the many historical things I would have named differently if I would do it today mm. so let's see it's not customer it's actually company yeah that's that Customer user. Yeah. Typo. I knew there was something fishy. 
I had the feeling there was something wrong, but I didn't. I wasn't able to put, put my finger on it. That's that. Okay. Now I'm curious. Let us take a look at the actual setup. Since my development database isn't very big, this ran quite quickly, so... Let's see, how many collaborations do we have? 15, that's good. And the first one is between website 1 and user 3. Second entry, website 2 and user 3. Last one, website 15 and user 3. I wonder if it's always user 3. Seems to be. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be that way. It's always user 3. actually have three users. So it's mostly the last user, the admin user. Okay. Well, yeah, that's just the data I have in my development database. Okay. Well, we can check if... Uh, the website has more than these users, I guess. Or I could take a look at my... Let me see. Website first. Cluster, company, Users, plug, ID. This should give me all the IDs of this website's users. Yeah, it's just user 3. Yeah, I guess it's just due to the type of data I have in my development database. Okay, so the next step would be to have our application keep this relationship up to date. So if a customer adds a new user to the company, we should go through all the websites this customer has and uh, associate this user with uh, each and every website. But I guess uh, i leave that for the next session because I don't think I'll be able to finish this in the final 15 minutes. And it'll be easier to start at the beginning. Uh, in my next session. Okay, so far so good. We have a new relationship that will allow us to be much more flexible with assigning users to websites, but there's still quite a bit of way to go. Um, anyway, let's do a commit. Mm, so we have a user model update or website model update. The schema file is obviously updated because we've created a new model website collaboration. Uh, both the user and the website specs are updated. We have the uh, migration that creates the actual database table. We have an admin script that uh, populates this table with existing data and um, Rails generated a new factory 
for me and uh, here's the model that I've oh no that's the test for them for this website collaboration model well, I could go ahead and um, at least say it belongs to website and it belongs to user. Right? No, it should belong to Yeah, of course. Man, I even need to relearn RSpec. Let's run tests for the last time. And while I'm finishing things up here, I'll open the microphone f uh, up for you. Is there anything you'd like to ask me? Is there anything you'd like to chat about or to discuss? Hey EnvisionNet, welcome to my stream. Um, unfortunately, I'm just finishing up, so um, uh, what you have missed is that I um, started working again on uh, our one uh, single uh, web application project that uh, my company has, which is the hosting dashboard our customers use. and. Um, uh, I wanted for uh, to to change a few things in there for years, and uh, now I finally get to do this. Um, uh, what I did is um, change or add a few um, relationships between different uh, models in the application, and um, that will allow me to have a much more flexible permission uh, system in there. Um, Fortunately, uh, I've recorded all this. Uh, you can uh, re-watch it on, on Twitch, of course, and um, I'll also make an effort of um, putting the recording on our YouTube channel, uh, where it will be stored and available for longer than uh, on Twitch. Um, uh, apropos of that, um, I haven't been... Uh, 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 spending time on uploading our uh, my recordings to YouTube lately, so um, I have a bit of a backlog on on uh, video files that I need to upload there. But um, I guess um, with uh, the rain outside, this is uh, one of the better opportunities to do so. So you'll be able to um, watch the the recording as well. The only thing I uh, need to do uh, for today is to commit my changes here. So add the website collaboration model. Why is this change necessary? In order to have a more flexible and uh, um, convenient permission system we need a direct relationship between website and user 
How does it address the issue? Uh, this change introduces the website collaboration model that implements the M to N relationship between the two models. What side effects does this change have? None. It doesn't have any effects to be uh, to be honest because uh, the application doesn't use it. And this resolves uh, issue number 21. Not completely, far from completely, but uh, still. What company do I work for? Let me just uh, use one of these fancy chat commands. So, Envision, how did you find my stream? How do, uh, did you uh, happen to, to find it? Actually, uh, that question goes to, to everyone out there. Uh, so, yeah, Twitch programming section, yeah, brilliant. Uh, so, it was a good idea to add it to the programming uh, category. I thought about adding it to the creative uh, category, but I guess uh, programming makes much more sense. All right. I'll still stay around for a few mi uh, more minutes, but uh, yeah, I, I guess I uh, finished my work for today. Anything you have planned for the rest of your workday? Let me switch to my talking screen here. Currently, you have your school exams going on, so she should be realizing getting work done, but no, you're programming and on Twitch, of course. It's amazing how many times I uh, I get that. I really should be doing some work. I really should be doing homework. I really should be working on exams and stuff. But no, here I am in Twitch chat. Here I am in World of Warcraft Guild chat and... Uh, I am procrastinating and um, I can so relate. Uh, I've been doing that quite a bit lately, to be honest. Um, and yes, Simon usually should be working. <laughs> but uh, fortunately, this counts as work. Uh, uh, this stream was started for exactly uh, work reasons. So I'm more than happy to have my team 
on the stream. At least parts of it. Okay. No, oh, yeah, really. Um, just just uh, yesterday, I uh, quickly uh, went into World of Warcraft to do some housekeeping and uh, chat. Uh, had a quick quick chat with another member, and uh, who told me that they really should be doing homework for their final exams and. Uh, Instead, they decided to do a bit of uh, questing or something. So uh, we are all guilty of that. All right, folks. So if there is anything else you'd like to add to this um, session, I actually should put up uh, a new agenda issue on my github repository here i'll close the the one from last week and uh, i should have done this before the stream but uh, i actually forgot about it uh, so let's just do a new issue here so obviously i did um Hosting dashboard coding. So that's the issue for today. If you don't want to use the URL, you can see up there in my browser. You can also go to the URL that is uh, mentioned on the stream here. Um, so just go to bit.ly slash DevOps life and uh, it'll take you to my git repository here if there is anything you'd like to ask if there is any feedback you have for me if you have any suggestions what i could do better please leave them here um, just in the comments uh, for this session i'll leave this issue open until uh, next time or so and um, I really appreciate all uh, feedback and comments because uh, it shows me what uh, I do well and it shows me what I could do better and both are, uh, are great things to know. Um, for today, uh, I'm done. Uh, thanks for uh, joining me here and um, I'll be back on Thursday at the same time, 3.30 p.m. GMT. And uh, I guess um, I'm pretty sure that I'll be uh, following up uh, where I'm leaving now. Until then, have a great day. Cheers. <laughs>